and you can go ahead. Okay, thank you, Diane. So hello, everyone. So we are on day seven of Studio Web session, and we are very happy that you are actively participating on each day on each topic. And uh, let's continue the same process. I am Swati, Associate Automation Developer at Vajrang Organization. And we have our transformation distress, sorry, I'm so sorry, Vajrang Vilaka. Digital leader. Could you please introduce yourself? Am I audible? You are audible. Yeah, it's okay. So let's move on to our topic. Today we are going to work on exception handling. Now, what is this exception handling and how can we handle those exceptions is the important topic that we need to learn. Now, to handle any exception, we need try-catch activity. Okay. Now, what is this try-catch activity? Try-catch is used to handle exception during the execution of a workflow. During the workflow execution, we might get some kind of exceptions. That exceptions can be handled by using try-catch activity. Now, what is try, what is catch, and what is finally? Try means, so whatever the activities that we feel like, they may get exceptions. Such kind of activities we put in try block. Now catch. What is catch block? Now, with whatever the exception that we get within try block will be caught in the catch block and will be handled in the catch block. Finally, when finally is an optional thing, so whatever the activities that are there in the finally block, will execute regardless of the exception. Okay, now what is retry? Suppose if I am working with any web-based web application or if you want to log into a web page, if I have given any wrong credentials or if I if my internet got, I mean, I have some issue with my internet, then what to do? I need to retry that in order to smooth uh, execution, okay? So for that reasons, we use retry. In such scenarios, we use retry. Now, we also have throw. Okay, now what is throw? So throw is used to custom exceptions. So all these things we'll discuss in our process. Now, first understand the scenario. Let me explain you. See here, I have uh, six text files. What I need to do? I need to upload these six text, text files into storage bucket. After uploading, in my process, I need to get the list six text files and iterate through each text file and it has to read the text file and output the result. This is my initial scenario. Now, after that, we'll raise a scenario to, to get an exception. Finally, we'll solve the exceptions, okay? Now, before that, I will put everything in the chat. Please download it. And please uh, put a message after downloading in the chat. Okay, please download it and upload this. Create a storage bucket named storage text files and upload all these files to that storage bucket. Okay, once you have done that, please put that in message. Put that in the chat. Put a message in the chat. Like this. See, I have my storage bucket. In that, I have a storage bucket named storage text files. In that, I have uploaded all the text files. Can you see this? I can see them. Yes.
have you downloaded the text file please confirm yeah and please upload that in storage bucket If you have done that, please confirm. Okay. Okay. Oh, a few more done. So that we can start our process. Okay. So let's move to our process. Now go to Studio Web, create a new project, and I'm using manual automation. Edit the project name, description handling. Now, what is the initial requirement? Okay, so what I said, first of all, we need to retrieve all the text files in the storage bucket, isn't it? Now for that, we have an activity called list storage files. Okay. So after retrieving, just provide folder path. My folder path is shared and my storage bucket name is storage text files. And in order to provide a storage bucket, just provide slash. It, it provides you the directory. Okay in double quotes, provide slash, save. Okay, now here in output, result variable is automatically generated, but for clear understanding, I'm modifying it. I'm creating one more variable to store this data, like uh, storage files list, okay? Okay, now, I have got all the files in this storage files list variable. Okay. Now let's check how many files I've. Hello. We can hear you, Swati. Yeah, I got a message stating like you are not connected to the internet. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just refresh the page. Should be good. Yeah, yes, yes. Now I have got extracted all the files from the storage bucket. Am I only, only the one who is getting this error or anyone getting this error? This Just try one, one or yeah. try with a different browser. The same process. Same. Guys, if you are also facing okay. the same issue, please add it in the chat that you are having issue. Let me check my internet. DNS address could not be found. Swati, can you please check with google.com or any other website? If that's there, then it's a problem with UiPath Studio or website. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, Google it's, version. It's a problem with the website of UiPath. Just please confirm if you are able to uh, check with the details.
Yeah, now I got it. Yeah, okay. go ahead and cut. Yeah. The variable has not created. Let me create the variable again. Create a variable to store the list of files like uh, storage file list. Okay, and I also want to know the count of the list list count of the files that have been extracted. How can I do that? I'm using log message activity, and from which variable from which I want to check the count use a variable. Uh, instead this, I'm going to open expression editor. Now here I'm choosing the variable from this storage file list. I want to get the count. Okay, save. Now let's run our process and check how many files got extracted, got uh, extracted. Yeah, we got that. I hope it should be six. Now, did I get six? Yes. So this variable contains six files. Now, what I need to do, I need to iterate through each file. After iterating, I have to read each file and output the value, output the result. Now, for this iteration process, we require for each activity. For each, now what is the variable? Storage files list. Now, from this storage files list, what I want to do? Read storage file. Okay, read storage text. Now provide orchestrator folder path shared. Current storage bucket name is store storage text files and file path. So instead of providing only one file path, we can provide many things, right? Okay. How can we provide all the text files that we have got by using the current item, right? Now I'm going to open expression editor. Now current item, what we want? We want file full path. Okay, save. Now after doing that, what we need to do? We need to write it into or else I need to display the result. Log message. Okay. and. An expression editor. So, how can I display message? Yes. Result. Okay. And if you want, we can also give the text file name. file data is result I want to get my result at the bottom of this text okay save now let's run our process and check for the text files so this is our initial scenario, right? Test the process. Directory, it should be double quotes slash. Uh, you have to give slash in double quotes. Okay, now let's see text.txt is there uh, and five.txt is there, four.txt is there. 
three dot txt two and one. Okay. Now we have successfully read the files and we have successfully output the result. Now let's try the scenario. How to get an exception? Okay. To write a exception scenario. Now what for that? What I'll do is here I'll put a breakpoint. Uh, and anyhow, did you complete it till here? All of you. I missed something on the reach storage tech setup. Can you see? Yeah, sure. In the reach storage text, provide the variable. Now file path is current item dot. I think the world current is... item dot file file path. No. Yeah. Is that clear? So Adi, let's just wait for people to complete. And yes, everyone yes. confirm once you get the result in the output. All we need is, uh, Swadi have already provided five files as a text files. You need to upload them in your storage bucket. And the requirement is to read all the files using for loop, get the list of all the files. Once you get the list in the for loop, just go ahead and read each file and add it as a log message. That should be the requirement. So they will still wait. We have one response stating that it's done. Yes, I got the text file. Thank you. Uh, where did the variable result come from on the final? I missed that too. So they are asking where did the result variable come from the final uh, on the final log message. So once you check in the read log uh, read text file, you will get a result in the output. Okay, so that's what you need to check out in the mess log message. You can just directly add it. Go to log message, Swati. Yes, sir. Remove. Can you edit? So remove everything. Okay, just uh, click on the arrow. So read storage yeah. text and then the result. That's what you need to add. Click on that. Yeah. And click on save. So we are seeing some messages getting printed. So Swati, I'll guide you. Please continue. So can you yes, give Vashti. a break point? Yes, Vashti. Give a break point and read text file. Yeah. Read. So I have already given break point that read storage text. Okay. Can you click on test? Yeah. Now what will happen is, so it will stop. It will pause the execution at the break point. Okay. Now it has paused. But till here, the process is, it has uh, extracted the files and we have got a uh, log misses and the current item holds all six files, isn't it? Now what we need to do is, yes, Vajra, can you continue? Uh, so Swati, uh, what we will do, let's okay. assume that uh, one of the file gets deleted while there is a, exactly. the bot is executing. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Now let's go into, uh, can you, can you go back to the studio once? Okay. Can you go back yeah. to the studio? And on the right side, there is something called data manager. Can you click on it or uh, can you click on data manager? And can you open the results text? Do we have values for yes, them? Sir. Okay, we don't no, have values. Okay, done. So I would like to introduce something called immediate panel. Uh, can you click on the third icon? Yeah, watches panel. Yes, watches panel. So if you can see here, we have storage list file. In the storage list file, we have a list of items and it's trying to read the first file. Is it correct? Yeah. So can you please delete file one from the storage bucket? So we are raising yes, an Mishra. exception and we are trying to make sure that the first file gets deleted. 1.txt, delete. Uh, Vajrang, can I delete second one so that they can understand after getting exception? First thing will be... Uh... Okay. executed but if 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 it get an exception it will stop abruptly right can i delete two 
yeah go ahead yeah. sounds good okay so we are not creating exception on first one but since we have a collection and the path it will try to read the second file when it's trying to read the second file the file is not available now so it should throw an error okay go ahead and continue yeah let's go back to our ex uh, uh, sorry workflow and let's resume that process now we are continuing the process let's check the output as we have text file data one data it got read and we have got the output now let's check what will happen if i continue as we have manually deleted two we are getting an exception okay blob file blob file info does not exist because the file is not available in the storage bucket now if i continue again let's check what happens now it went back to for each okay and continue it stop execution now what did it do it abruptly stop the execution once it find any any kind of exception it abruptly stop without processing all the files isn't it now did you get so, that so swati uh, do you mean to say that i cannot continue my bot or if there is any error i will not be able to continue further if there exactly, is any exactly but the th yeah but the thing is we can handle that once we handle okay. that we can continue so that is what we are going to discuss after completing this okay, okay. i request everyone to continue to continue till here after that uh, so we to, to do till here after that we can continue the session exactly so just try to make sure you delete second file and then continue the session yeah with the second file so when you should delete after stopping at the break point it should not be before because if they stop yeah. uh, if they don't stop before uh, reading the text file it means that they are going to get the latest location or they might be getting the latest list of files in which all the files list are already available so exactly all you do is have a break point at read storage text once you get to read storage text then go then go ahead and delete second file or third file whatever you want to delete delete it from the storage bucket you can upload it again after some time but delete it first uh, okay. we are going to have a uh, different scenarios uh, let's work together and learn together and myself and swati i am an awesome auto associate auto developer at vachanga organization yeah vachanga let's yeah. just see someone uh post it I I'm getting a we are getting a reason right? Yes, no, not not. Okay, yeah, just go ahead, guys. Please go ahead and add it in the chat. Okay, getting error here. Just add is uh, I slash that should work. If you get an error, please post that error in the chat. We need to get an error. Then we will handle it. Uh, make sure if you are directly giving slash in directory, just give slash. If you go and open in the ex uh, open explorer ex expression editor, then you'll be having double quotes. That's why you might get this error. Correct. You will be having four quotes, I believe. Yeah, we have a message. Okay. So Swati, let's. Yes, Vachu. Let's continue, Swati. Let's okay. see how we can handle the error. Now, so what what happened here? If we encounter an exception, our automation stop abruptly. Right? It's not a smooth completion. It's a hard completion. Right? Now, how can we deal that? For that. So where are we getting the error while reading the storage text, right? 
Now for that, what we need to do, we need to add try catch activity. Add try catch. Okay. Now what is it in the beginning? The, what is the tribe in which activities we have to put in the tribe? All the activities that we feel like they might get exception. Such kind of activities we need to put in tribe. Now, which activity is getting exception? Read storage text. Now put that move that read storage text to tribe. So Swati, okay. I have it over here. Yes, Vaishra. So why can't I keep my complete workflow in the try catch block? Why should I keep only one or two activities which can fail or which I think can fail? Because in a bot, everything can fail, right? At any error. Yes. What can fail? Yes, that we need to have only one specific piece of code in try catch. Uh, for example, if we put this list of storage files, it will try again, right? Might be, I'm not, uh, see, uh, let me explain that okay. if I'm wrong, please. Yeah. I, I'll try to, I try to explain. Okay. Exactly. So okay. obviously in, uh, most of our codes, we'll first start our coding block with a try catch statement. So whenever there is a new file, we'll start with the try catch block and internally we will write again, some try catches. Okay. The internal try catch is to handle internal error. And the overall try catch is for the complete workflow file. So if you want to keep a try catch for the complete workflow, you're free to do it. But again, you need to make sure what are the implications and you need to test it uh, effectively so that the automation is successful. There is no limitation that you need to have only one try catch or one uh, else or one cache block. You can have as many. But having too many try catch blocks will actually give you a spaghetti type of code. Instead of that, keep only one. So let's assume that there is a list of storage files and you can also keep try catch for it. And all of a sudden, if the storage bucket is deleted and if you want to add it back, you can also sometimes get something like that. Again, try catch, you can keep it anywhere, but the most probable or the best way is to keep it when we find or when we think that there is a, some error that can occur. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. On. Okay. So as I'm getting error, I knew that uh, if that file is not exist, I'll get error at read store restrict. That why I'm, that's why I'm putting that activity in the storage bucket. Sorry, in the try catch activity. Okay. Now if I have put read store restricts in try, if the error is not there, what should it do? It also display the result. That's why I'm giving, if there is no error, immediately it will display the error. So I'm moving log message also to try. If, what if, if the file does not exist? Now we need to, whatever the exception that has got in the try, it will be catched in the cache block, caught in the cache block, and we need to handle those exceptions. Now, for now, I'm just, giving a log message in the exception. Okay, we already have exception, right? In that exception, we are giving a log message stating like open expression editor. Okay. I am just providing the system exception message. Okay. Now this is the exception and we are providing the message provided by the system. Same. Okay. Now before that, what I'll do, I'll go back and I'll upload the storage text file. Okay, I have uh, removed two right. Save. Open. Upload. Now let's go to our process. I believe we all have breakpoint at read storage text, right? Now let's test the process. But when coming to breakpoint, we need to go back to our uh, orchestrator storage bucket and we have to delete some files. Now, here it got paused. Now, what we need to do? We need to go back to our uh, storage bucket. Now, I'm removing two as well as five. Okay. Go back and test the process. Continue. 
Now file one is there. That's why I got data. Now when I click on continue, as we don't have second file, we'll get an error. But earlier, if I get error, my automation got stopped, right? Now let's check whether it will stop or it will continue working. If I continue, I'm getting a message, blog file does not exist. And once I continue, as I have my second, third text file, the data is, I'm able to output the data, even the fourth also. But what if, if I get five, again, five is not there. That's why I got an error message. Okay. Blog file that info does not exist. Continue. And sixth file. Okay. Finally, our automation completed successfully. Even if we encounter exceptions, we have handled those exceptions by using try catch activity. Okay. This is how we can handle exceptions. Is that clear? So in earlier stage, if we did not use try catch, if we encountered an exception, it stopped abruptly, okay? Without processing the other items, other files. But when we use try catch, try catch activity, even if we get any exception, at that exception, only a message is displayed. After that, it goes on continuing to other processes until the final process are completed. So how, this is how we need to handle exceptions. Is that clear? Are you working on it? If you have completed, uh, please put a message in chat. So, Swadi, I have a question over here. Yes, Vasha. Um, let's assume that after first time, it, the bot mm. tries to get the file. I need mm. to retry. I should not stop the bot. or It should, I, it should not think that it need to try only mm. once. Mm. I need to retry. Basically, I need to try to mm. make sure least two or three times. Mm. Okay. And only okay. then it should throw error. Okay. Is there so a way we can... what I'll... Yes, yes, Vajrang, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to retry. Yes, uh, I am adding... I am trying to retry the read storage check. Okay, I am adding a retry activity. So in that so retry... You are not going to retry everything, but whatever no. you, whatever you feel can be retried yeah. or must be retried. Only that we will be retried. Exactly, version. Okay. Uh, it depends. If you want to retry the entire try catch activity, you can put retry scope around it, and you can add try catch inside the retry scope. But, okay, uh, but for now, uh, I want to retry only. Re re yeah. Yes, version. Go ahead. Go ahead, Swat. Please continue. Complete yeah. it and yes, then Okay, now I am moving this to retry. Okay, now let's provide here retry contains activity body and condition. Now activity, it should be the activities that should be retried. And in condition, if here in writer scope, we have uh, options, click on options, how many number of retries? So I want to retry three times. And what is the interval between each retry? I have I want three seconds. Save. Okay. And in condition, if the condition is met, it stopped retrying. Even if I have given three, if the condition is met, at 
one or two, it stops retry. Okay. Now uh, for this, I want if we'll check. So, Adi, please don't add any condition. Let it retry. Um, if there okay, is an error, it will retry. Or else it will not do anything. Uh, so, the, just go ahead and click, uh, thing, close. Yes, Vajrang. But the thing is, here the condition field, uh, we are getting an error, Vajrang, without that condition. Okay, the condition field of a retry scope accepts only certain activities. So, it's not accepting if condition. Remove the if condition. Uh, I even tried with element, check element. I think that's not required. Okay. So okay. can you go to the top ones? Yes. Can you see the error still exists? So what is the error about? Yes. Okay. So it's trying to check if the condition is true or not. Uh, can you keep an activity called yeah. check apps uh, boolean activity? So this accepts only true or false. So we need to give if the condition is true or false. Check so not check app state. No, not check app state. Uh, there mm. will be a variable that gives out boolean as a result. Again, element exists should work if we are having something like uh, login where we use images and all. Mm. Okay. Um, just okay, a second. Okay, okay. Yeah. Check for true. Check true. Check true. Okay. Keep that. Okay. Okay. Check is... So we need to. Okay. Can... I think that's that's what what we need. Yeah. Uh, press cancel, please. Don't don't add that. Okay, watch. <clears throat> okay, so in true block, it's trying to accept a variable, and it's trying to find if it is true or not. That's all. Okay, mm. so create a variable called. So create a variable directly. Okay. In that variable, just add, and the scope of it or type should be um, true or false. So if you can see false. here, it's yes, by sure. default taking true or false. Um, yeah. Variable name, or just check read success or bold read success. So we are assigning this variable to true only if the read is successful. Okay. Click on create. Okay. okay. Can you please scroll up? No, after or before the log message. We have a log message, right? After read storage text. In the condition itself, right? No, after read storage text. Read storage text okay. at the top. Okay. Here I need to provide. Yeah, keep an SN statement. Set variable value. Correct. Okay. So we are assigning it to true only if the read file is successful. Bold read success true. Yeah, it should be true. Okay. So by default yeah. it should be false, right? So can you add yeah. before read storage text, can you add the same set variable and make it to false? Okay. So we are not making it to true until the read variable is successful. Okay. And then we are trying to check if the data is extracted. If it is extracted successfully, then the next activity executes. Okay. Okay. Can you click on read storage text once? Read read rest code. Yes, sir. Okay. So show additional options for retrace code. Okay. So it's showing if the con if you need to continue on error or not. So you should not continue on error because if you continue on error, 
yeah. it will retry for three times. And also you can see that it is retrying for three times. You can add as many retries as possible. So this gives okay. you a way how you can retry automatically at a number of times. And if the retry is failed, then again, we are not continuing. We are throwing an error. Yeah. Okay. Can you please debug the code once? And can you please upload okay. all the files? I think you missed some four or five, right? Let's go ahead and upload yes, all the files. Sure. So guys, if you are able to understand, please go ahead and say yes. All we are trying to do is we are trying to retry if you are failing to read the information. Okay. Oh, can we Even catch a found exception? Yes, we can do that. If we don't, if we are able to handle file not found, yes, you can do that. Yeah. Swati, please go ahead and run the bot. I have an error, Vachu. Still have. So, can you accept certain activities that retries a boolean value, returns like check true or check false? We have already added check true or check false, right? Yeah. Can you click on show additional options? Yes, sir. I don't think that's the one. Uh, you're giving, if uh, you're trying for, for loop. Can you please scroll oh, sorry. down? sorry. Yeah, yeah. Which I scope, show additional options. Yeah. I think we are good, Swati. Just go ahead and execute the board or it's not allowing us. Yeah. Okay, let's try with that later tomorrow. In the tomorrow session, we'll try to bring up with some result on why we are not able to do it. And guys, if you are able okay. to do this activity, please come back and say that we are able to complete. Can you refresh the, can you just refresh the page? Let's see if it comes. Yes, if yeah. It, if we can able to do it. So the basic idea is to retry when we find that there is an error. Okay. Yeah. So if multiple people find this as an error, then we can send out a feedback stating that this is not working on the top. Okay. Can you please scroll yeah. down? In the retry scope, we have try block. Okay, everyone are facing the same issue. Scroll down a bit. So we don't have the error now, right? Okay, it's still yeah, loading the. But way. it is it is still loading, right? Yeah, we have an error. Can you please scroll down a bit? So, so can you add the error message or error text? Message there is a text, right? Enter text. Can you please add that information? Scroll down, not here at the bottom. You have okay, yeah, you have something called error, error message, error message in the check true statement. Check, check true statement, check you have true an error. statement. Yeah, this one, yes, correct. So, uh, there is an error message activity. Yes, error message field. Try to add the error message field. Yeah. No. Do I need to add? But Swati, follow my instructions. Okay. okay. Can you yeah, see yeah, error okay, message? Yeah, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just go ahead and add some random message. Just mention invalid. Okay. Okay, that should be good. Show additional options. So the result is an output and it should be true or false. Um, I think we should be good if we are not able to do it. Okay, can you see if the bool read success is a boolean statement or not? Yeah, true or false only. Can you check in the variables, Shannon? Yes. Can you change the type to boolean? I'm not able to edit this actually.
Okay, can you delete the variable and try to add it again or see there is an error now? Can you just check it? No. no. Can you add the default value as false? Yeah. Okay. Do you find any error now? No. We are still having the can error. I, yeah, can I add one more variable by deleting this? Yeah, remove it and add it with the same name. Yeah. Bold read success. I'm not able to add. Maybe I'll go back and read. Sure. So exception handling will always be a tricky part. Once you get hold of it, it will be easy. Uh, this okay. is something that uh, we probably need to uh, bring to the attention of the product, uh, Vajran, because I mm. also found these things yesterday as I was working through. I thought I was imagining it like you can't remove a variable or you can't change its type. Or if you rename a variable, you see that it's not found. And after some time when I come back, that variable is there, right? And I end up having two variables uh, created, uh, just like Swati is struggling now because um, I think this is something that we are, because it wasn't this way. I don't know what changed, right? Um, I'm also having some of these nagging issues when I'm when I'm uh, you know um, when I'm developing automations. Something probably we need to kind of do one more round of testing and and see if we have to get back to the product team on this. Definitely, um, Andy. Thank you. We shall do that. Even now, also, I to remove that. Let's create a new variable. Okay, it's fine, Swati. Let's go ahead and continue with the other other tasks. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see it later. I and... just want. Okay. So I'll remove that retry scope and all. I want this read to respect. Okay. So now it is the exception message that I'm getting. I'm facing some issue as well. Result variable is not available. Can you refresh the page, please? Yeah. If the scope is correct, we have provided a global scope. So people who are facing issue, just go ahead and add it in the feedback. So Swati, don't create a variable like that. Uh, let it generate on. Okay, sure. So all these issues, uh, whatever you're facing, if you're able to solve them and create a project, I think that's what leads you to the trophy of your path uh, studio web series projects. Okay, uh, now can you remove the variable first? Remove the results variable? Yes, sir. Sure. Clear the value? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are done. It, it's good. It's good now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Vash. Okay. Run the code once and then continue. Okay. Uh, so in order to run the code, first thing, storage. 
add a breakpoint. Um, so instead of this uh, system message, we can also throw the exception. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll throw my custom message. I'll use it through activity and open expression editor. How to throw? We need to add new, the exception name. I'm going with exception and provide your custom message. Like uh, file does not exist. Okay. Now, if there is no need to add throw in the cat block, you can add anywhere in the uh, inside inside any activity like if and all. Okay, now let's test this. So Swati, while you are doing this activity, uh, I would yes, like to give you a better please. example of throw statement. Let's say okay. that there are 10 files or we have hmm. six files. Yes, now please. the business requirement is not to process any file that is having hmm. an even number in the file name. For example, okay. two, four, and six should not be a process. I need to process only one, yeah. two, uh, one, three, and five. So in that condition, okay. if you if you can read the file name, and if okay. you can get uh see if the file name is an even number or odd number, and don't process okay. or don't read that files. So that is the best example okay. to use a throw block. Some members can okay. think that we can also use an if condition. For example, okay, I'll find okay. an if condition. And if the file name contains an even number, then I will write the values on the right so that you will not process. Mm -hmm. Even that will work. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to learn how to use throw, throw statement. So try to implement with throw block. Yes, Vashon. So for that, first I require in try, I require this activity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now my condition is, I'll provide a condition. So first thing I have, in order to get a number, I have 1.txt, 2.txt, 3.txt, right? So from that, I need to extract a name without extension. And after extracting, I need to convert that to integer. And I need to check whether that integer value is checked, uh, is uh, even or not. OK? That is what, right? I have 1.txt. First thing, I need to remove that txt. I need to get 1. And that one should be converted to integer. And after that, we need to check whether 1 is even or not. Now, so let's... Swati. Uh, yes. I have a question. Yes, it sounds like complex logic. Can we generate it with generative AI? Yes, Vajrang. Now I'm doing with the generative AI itself. Okay. Yeah. Now get file name without extension. Because I don't want extension, right? Now, what is that file name? This thing. Current name dot full file path. So I want without extension. And Convert that value, convert it to integer. After that, what we need to do? And check for even. If, if it is even, then we have to read. If not, we have to throw an exception stating that you should not process odd files. Okay, now generate. Okay, now I got an expression. And I'm using this expression, save. Now, then what we need to do? Whatever, first thing we need to read. If at all, if it is a even, it has to read. Now go to read storage text, move read storage text to then. Also log message to then. then. Okay. In, uh, as I said, there is no need to use uh, through in catch, right? Now, instead of using it in catch, in else itself, I'm throwing an exception in the block else only. Okay, in else, log message. How to create a exception, new throw. I'm so sorry. Instead of log message, I have to use throw activity. Else throw and custom the message. Open expression editor, new business rule exception. Oh, sorry, new exception. Mm 
don't process odd number five. Okay, now save. Okay, now let's check. Here I have a trade storage text. I have a, a breakpoint, right? Now let's do the let's test the process. I think there is no need of breakpoint. Now one is the odd number, right? So we are telling don't process odd numbers five. Continue. Next. Continue. We have second file. Second TXT got read. And throw don't process odd numbered files. Third one. So for every odd value, we are throwing an exception. So like this, we can do. Now let's see. Fourth value got processed. Fourth text file got processed. For fifth, I got don't process odd file or value and sixth has to process. Now text file six is processed. Now my execution stop smoothly. Now this is how we can work on row as well. Is that the use case you asked for? Ajran? Yes, that's the use case. Thank you so much, Swati. So team, uh, can okay. you please go ahead and try to work on this? Um, Diana, we are done with our session. And if you want to give a quick info about the um, about the quiz as well as the uh, projects that we are requesting, and then we can close having it for today. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're I talking about the um, you're talking about the um the information on forum. So if everybody goes into the chat and copies all the URLs I sent you, you'll find information on the use case uh, studio web contest where you can win prizes. Please make sure you copy that. And I'll, I'll send that out again tomorrow. Um, also, there's uh, information there on how you can find the recording for this session tomorrow. Um, at the URL and also another URL is in the chat about how to register for tomorrow's session. So, um, Vajrang, did you want everybody to turn on their camera so we can get another photo? Definitely, Diana. Great. So if you guys can do that, that'd be great. Yes, please turn on your cameras. Let's have a quick picture. Good to see you, Rina. Hi, Manuita. This was that. Hi. Hi, Glenn. So we are following uh, Glenn from day one. Good to see you, yes. Glenn. We have Lakshmi Rajendran. Yes, please turn on your cameras. Okay, we've got a few cameras still off. Yep. Okay, right. Diana, let's take a picture. Okay, great. Then... Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the session today, Swathi and Vajrang, and we'll see everybody tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.